Welcome back, everybody. In this lesson, which is our last list lesson, we're going to discuss more topics in list and also we're going to learn about tuples. All right. So, how do we delete an element or a list? So, we can use actually del del statement. It's a keyword in Python. So we can use the del statement to delete any variable, by the way. Okay, so we can use that to delete elements or uh, an, an entire list. So the syntax is use del and then the variable name. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we can use delete del statement to elements or the entire list. Okay. So for example, we have a list like this and deleting first index of the list gives like this. And if we, we can also delete the entire list as well. So if you try to delete and a not, not existing index, then it returns index error. Okay, so for example, in the previous example, if I put like like this, which the element three is not existing, so it gives index error. Okay, so usually this is not good because now Basically, it returns an error and then program crashes. So to avoid this, you can use slicing. Okay. Remember, slicing is forgiving, right? So if you delete the slice, and if this one is just this doesn't exist, basically it doesn't um, there's nothing to delete because this returns empty, right? So you can use slicing to delete safely. Okay. All right. So let's test these things out. Okay. So I have this. Okay. So I am printing a lon in here. And then I'm going to delete the first one, first element. Okay. First index. All right. And then, then in here, I'm going to delete the entire list. Okay. So, and then, then I'm I'm printing it again. So I'll get an error over here. Okay. So I'm reassigning, and then then uh, we'll we'll try this first. Okay. All right. So let's go to the top. So. Um, this is unbound local error. Basically, um, let's see. Yeah. So um, because we deleted the list. So, but over here, I have the list, and then I deleted index one of that list, which is this one. So the resulting list is this. Okay. So. Now um, let's, so in, in, in here, I basically deleted the entire list, okay. So, and then and I'm trying to use it over here, so I got that error, okay. So I'm gonna do this, okay. And then um, in here, so what I'm going to do is basically uh, I resign this to this list, and then I'm going to now uh, delete a non-existing element. So element three is not there, so it's zero, one, two. So there's no third element. So this is uh, this would result an error. So let's try that. Okay. So I got index error. Okay. All right. So to avoid this, okay, so I'm going to block this. Okay, I can use, I can use slicing. Okay, 
So if I try to do this, right? So nothing happened, no errors, right? So this basically this this, this line didn't get executed. Okay. All right. So we can delete. Let's say for example, like this. I'm gonna write it in a new statement. Okay. So if you put like this, let's say one. Like this, and then print it again, and we'll see that it, it deleted the slice. Okay. All right. So, right here, so we have the full list that is right here. And then, after this operation, only first element exists because I'm deleting from one to all the way to the end. So, these two got deleted. All right, so let's go back to our lesson. All right, so list aliasing, okay. So this is really important topic in, in Python, especially in list. Okay, let's see what is it about. So we know that variables refers to object, okay. So what will happen when we assign one variable to another? Let's investigate that first. So for example, I have this number one equals two, number two equals number one. So this is basically I am assigning number two to number one, okay? So what's actually happened is basically number one is referring to two and then number two also now referring to the same value, okay? So we say basically, number two okay, is an alias of number one. Okay. In other words, we can say number two is aliased. Okay. So we use al alias like, you know, to refer to one thing um, with many names. So that's what we call alias, right? So um, there are many names, but it all refers to one. So in this case, number two is alias. Okay. So, so sorry, the value two is alias. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Just me. So this way basically Python optimize memory. So Python can optimize memory this way. So it doesn't need to recreate the same object. Maybe that may be taking really big amount of memory. Like for example, that's a huge, this entire textbook is open in the memory. So it takes 500 megabyte. And let's say if you want to copy me, create a, another to the same, let's say that textbook, it takes another 500 megabyte. So instead of that, I can use Python can use just eight byte of the memory that it takes for a one reference and then point it to the same value, okay? So Python can optimize memory, okay? All right, so continuing on aliasing, okay? So if the object is mutable, so early example, we had the immutable object, which is a number two. So in this case, now the object is a list the mutable object. Now I'm reassigning, sorry, uh, I'm assigning L2, the another, uh, another list to same L1, okay? So I have the diagram like this. So L1 is referring to one, two, three, that's list, and L2 also do the same. So if I change L2, okay, and it alters L1 as well, because L2 is essentially the same value, okay? So for example, if I do this, L2, the second element, if I change that element, L1 will become like this too, okay? So 
So this may be intentional or unintentional, okay? So if it is intentional, that would be okay, but if it is unintentional, that may code really hard to um, catch, uh, like catch bugs, okay? So it's always good to avoid aliasing with mutable object as a sort of a convention, okay? All right, so let's check this out. We go to slide four, okay? So I have the list one, two, three, okay? And I'm creating another list by simply assigning it to L1, okay? So now I'm changing via item assignment, okay? So to 91, 99, and then now I'm printing L1. So let's try this out, <coughs> excuse me. So I got one, two, ninety nine. So L1, so I'm printing L1, so it got changed as well. So I changed only the L2, but L1 also got changed. Okay. All right. So now we saw that if we use simple assignment, like we did over here, we cannot make a new copy. It's simply going to refer to the same value, okay? So then the problem is how can we clone a list, okay? So remember, we cannot use simple assignment like this to clone, okay? So then how do we clone a list? All right. We know that slicing makes a new list. Okay. So, for example, if you have a list like this, and if we make, if we assign the new list to a slice with all defaults, we know that L1, this would give the same list. So, but it's a new list because slicing return a new list. So this will be a clone of L1. So L2 will be a clone of L1, okay? So it can use the, the identity check to verify, okay? So L1 is L2 returns, should return false. Okay, let's check that out, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so I have L1 is this, okay? So I made L2 to a slice. So this slice is basically gives you the entire list of this, okay? So basically I am going to print this, okay? I'm going to check whether the two lists are, have the same identity. That means basically with checking whether the two lists point into a single value or not, okay? All right, so let's run this. Okay, so it falls, okay? So that means basically the, the two lists are two things now, okay? <clears throat> okay. Let's continue. So let's talk about how do we pass a list as a parameter, okay? So when we, when Python pass pretty much any variable, okay? So it basically pass a reference to a function, okay? When we pass it to a function, <clears throat> it actually pass a reference to that function, reference of that variable to the function. So when it happened to be a list, okay? So since lists are mutable, if we change the list inside that function, that chain going to reflect on the same list 
that is sitting in global frame. Okay. So basically it, it's because we pass the reference, we pass the address, not a copy or clone or just not the value, we pass the reference. So the thing that we pass the, the list that we pass to the function still pointing to the original location. So if we change it there, it's gonna change in the original location as well. So we call them, we call the functions that modifies the, the actual parameter that we pass modifiers, okay? And the modification so happens are called side effects. So if there's a function that it takes actual parameter parameters, and when we call the function with actual parameters, it's going to modify that pass parameter. And we call them modifiers. And the modification happened to the actual parameters called side effects. Because we are doing something else inside the function, now the, the actual parameter we pass is also changed. So it's a side effect. So if this is undesirable, if this is, if you don't want to do happen this, then you can pass a clone, right? You can, you can basically create a clone and pass it, okay? All right. So the other type of function is that the function that doesn't give side effects, basically call pure functions. And usually, the usual advice is always try to write a pure function because it's it's prone to less errors. And then sometimes th these kind of errors, it's really hard to track down because your program runs, the logic is correct, but you are getting a wrong uh, outcome. So basically, and imagine a program with thousand lines of code and you have this one global list and and then somewhere you are changing and then the other parts of the program that use the original list now doesn't work or give wrong result, okay? So striving to write a pure function, avoid these kind of mistakes, okay? So it's not that difficult. We just need to pass a clone, okay? Or make a copy inside. So the, the, the catch is basically, you need to, Python will take some extra memory to make that clone, okay? So that's the, the small price that you pay, okay? All right, let's continue. Before we continue, um, sorry, all right. So let's talk about list operations or list methods. So there's a lot of methods, uh, number of methods available from Python, okay? So here are some, append, insert, you can append to an existing list, append, a value, you can insert a value to a place in, in, in an existing list. You can pop a value out, so you can take out and, um, and get that value out. So that means basically remove that. You can push, you can push a value inside to, a, to the list. You can also sort, okay? So, you can click on this link to check the, the rest of the documentation, okay? So you can see that all of these append, extend, insert, there are a lot of them. And always when it comes to utility of any of these function, come over here and check that, okay? So you don't have to remember each of these, what it does. You will remember as you get your experience but you don't have to, okay? You don't have to cram these, okay? All right, so let's 
go back to our slides. So append, sort, reverse, and some of some many others, they return none. Okay. So basically they work in place and change the, the respect to list. Okay. So if you if you assign this list in, in method call. Okay, so basically, let's say you have a list and you, you reassign this return value of these methods into a list, let's say any variable. Okay, so since they return none, the value of that variable would be run. So if you return that variable, then you are returning none now. Okay, and this is a really common mistake. Okay, so we are thinking that, okay, so this is going to change this list and return that list. But no, it's the, the function work in place and change the original, but return nothing. So it returns none, okay? So if you use, if you reassign that operation to another variable, maybe another list, then the value of that list or variable would be none, okay? If you return that variable, you are essentially returning none. All right, so so let's do some um, uh, experiment with that. So we go over here. So I'm going to append a value. Okay. So let's say l1 dot append. Okay. And I'm going to append like ninety nine. I can print it, okay? So, so basically print L1, okay? So I'm gonna write it over here, Something like, okay? So, <clears throat> so let's print it, okay? So slide number seven, so I got this, okay? All right, so let's say I reassign this. So, so it's, a, it's a common mistake, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reassign this to L1, okay? This is a common mistake, okay? All right, by the way, I used to do this mistake uh, Sometimes, okay. So, and then you get none, okay. And if you return this in a function, the function returning now none, okay. All right. So, all right. So let's move on. So these list methods are actually optimized by expert. So if you see the utility of these, so you should first use them unless there's any uh, restriction, okay. All right, so let's continue. All right, so we're gonna move into tuples. All right, so we learn tuples as a, immutable sequence. So like it's similar, very similar to list. So it's a sequence as well in Python. Okay. So like a list, it can have any number of types, uh, types, objects inside. Unlike list, tuples are not changeable. So tuples are immutable. Okay. So you can think of it as a uh, immutable list. So tuples are pretty much immutable lists, okay? Lists are mutable, so tuples are immutable. All right, so this, this, this is an example. So to create a tuple, you can simply put them in a comma separated value like this, okay? So tp1 equals to this tuple one, one, two, three like this, and it will create this tuple, okay? 
You can also put two brackets. You can sandwich the values with two normal brackets. So that way it's more clear as well. So I, I'd like to create my tuples like these instead of like this. All right. So if you only want a single value, then we know that we cannot use without bracket. So we need to create, we need to put these two brackets and put a comma after this for single value. So imagine you are creating a tuple with just one value inside. You have to use this format, okay? So it creates this tuple. All right, so we, we said that, okay, tuple can, can have any type of element inside. Well, that element could be a, another mutable object like a list or a dictionary or a set, okay? So that means basically we have a tuple which we say immutable, but inside elements are mutable. That is possible. So that means basically don't assume tuple is absolutely immutable, okay? So for example, if we have a tuple like this, which I have the last element as a list, okay? I can change it to like this by simply accessing that element and changing it, okay? Notice I'm not, I'm not changing just the third element of the tuple, I am changing basically the value, the, the list value inside that third element, which is the first one, make it to zero, okay? the first element, okay? first index. Okay, so, so let's, let's check on these, okay? So I have a tuple. So I'm going to create this tuple. So let's just print, okay? So print it over here, okay? TP1, okay? All right, and then, then it's TP1. And then over here, it's the same thing, same tuple. All right, so, and then, then uh, it's TP2, okay? So I can use either this or this way to create tuples, okay? All right, and let's check this out first. Okay, so go over here. So I created the same tuple, okay? And let's go back. And so I have this tuple now. So let me just print the first element, okay? Right, TP, this one, not first element, sorry, the third, third one. Okay, so you see that it's a list. And that list, now it's a list. This is no longer belongs to tuple, this is a list. You know that list allow item assignment, so this is possible. So let's just now print T1 over here. Okay, run it again. All right, so oh, let's see. Okay, I think, yeah, so this should be all. All right, so I made a mistake somewhere. Let's see, TP3. P13. Oh, it should be T1. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Run it again. Okay. So I have this is that element four five. It's a list. Now I change it to four zero. Okay. So that is possible. Okay. So let's go back to our lesson. So it's it shares some some of the common properties 
with uh, with uh, with a list. Okay, so we can index them, we can slice them, concatenate them, repetition, we can do all of those stuff to tuple because it's another sequence. So it shares all sequence, common sequence operation that we learned in week three. Okay, so we can apply them on tuples as well. Since tuples are immutable, okay, so modifiers like append, insert doesn't work with um, work with tuples. Okay, you can actually check tuple operations like the way we uh, I open like right here. Okay, and you will you will see that those operations like append, insert not there. Okay, so Pure functions like index method or count, they work with tuples, tuples as well, okay? So we can also use a tuple when we return more than one value from a function. And I think in, in one of the programming assignment, I made, made you do so as well, okay? Let's say you have to return both the minimum and maximum of uh, of the tuple that you pass or of the list you pass, okay? So you can create a tuple out of it and then return it, okay? All right, it's not a must, must be thing, but you can do so, okay? All right, so let's go continue. So this is a new concept, tuple assignment, okay? So the idea is simple. So imagine now you are having to create, create, initialize 10 set of variables. So to initialize 10 variables, you need to write 10 lines of code, okay? So idea is basically wouldn't it be easy if we can write the entire 10, 10 set of lines in just a single line? So that's the idea of tuple assignment, okay? So that's basically the motivation behind tuple assignment, okay? So basically it allows you to get a tuple of variables into the left-hand side of your assignment statement. And on the, the right-hand side of assignment statement, you can put the same number of values that you need to be assigned to each of those in the left-hand side, okay? So, so number of variables and the number of values in both side of this assignment uh, statement should be equal, they match, okay? All right, so it is useful in swapping or multiple assignment in one line. So it's really useful, okay? So you don't have to write 10 assignment, let's say 10 variables need to be assigned. You just write one line like this and assign the values that you want them to be assigned, okay? So for example, I let's say I, I, I have three variable to be as initialized with these three values respectively. So I can do like this, so, I can write, so this is a tuple of variable, remember comma separated values. So variable one will get value one, variable two get value two, variable three get value four, okay? You can also use to swap two variables with, of their values, okay? So I have variable A, variable B, and just, just by, this simple tuple assignment, I am swapping A and B with their values, okay? Now, in this case, of course, this is not a initialization. We should have two A, B values first, okay? Now, in here, we don't have values beforehand. We are basically initializing these three variables. Here, we are swapping them, A and B, okay? So let's check this out. Okay, so 10, all right, right here. 
So I have these three values, okay? So what I'm going to do is, okay? So I'm going to, so this is my tuple of variables that needed to be initialized, all right? So now do this, okay? And then we can print those values, okay? All right, so I'm printing those values basically tuple of variables okay so let's run it okay so i got these three values are now one two oh you can check individual values as well okay so for example print okay so we are one so let me put it over here too. All right. So let's run this. Um, Sorry, mistake. Oh, should be single quotation. All right. So run it. So I got this one. Okay. All right. So. Now, if we try to, so let's say we made a mistake. So if we omit one value, this would work. Okay. So let me just copy this and put it over here. And if I try to like, do this, okay. So I get a this error, okay. Value error. Okay. So not enough values to unpack. So that's the error. Okay, so let me put it back right here and okay. So comment it out. Okay, so let's go back. All right. So the other thing is let's swap two of the two of these variables with values. So we know that variable one is one, we are two, we are three is, oh, right, let's swap those two, okay. So right here, create a tuple out of we are one and we are three. Now I'm swapping the two, so we are three, we are one, okay? So, so let's print these first. So I'm going to, so this is before shuffling, okay? So right here, okay? Oh, three, All right, so and this is basically this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oops. All right. So put it here. So this is the original two values. All right. Now I'm shuffling it over here. And now I can print the same. And you'll see that they are swapped. Okay. So let's say originals. And here, okay, so let's run it, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so these are the originals and these are the swap. You can see that one and, and we are one now take O, we are three, variable three now takes one, okay. All right, so let's continue. All right, so this is our uh, come down to our last slide, which is practice problem. Okay, so let's read the problem. Right. Given a list of numbers with duplicates, write a Python function named remote 
remove duplicates to return a new list of okay new list of numbers with duplicate removed okay so for example given the list of excuse me this list you can see that there are a lot of duplicates two three one just return duplicate removed list one two three okay well we know that you may have done in, in, in middle school or maybe in high school that this set operation. What is a set? Distinct set of elements is a set. So the items inside should be distinct. That means there should not be repeats. So this is a set operation. Python has a specific built-in type for sets. So the easiest way is to basically simply create a one, but we are not there yet. So we're gonna use this list and then make remove duplicates manually, right? So, so let's do the under umpire process. Okay, so I already copied my problem. So I'm gonna go full screen over here. All right, so let's set it, it again. So we have this list, need to remove the duplicates. Okay, so the input is basically this. Okay, so always try to do this. I mean, this is the formal process of solving a problem. And if you do this every day, even to a silly solving problem, it will become a habit. So for example, it's a now habit to me. So whenever I solve a problem beforehand, before you guys, I do this. So it's a habit to me. So it's naturally comes to me. That's, that's what we call habits, right? So to make it a habit, you have to do it every day. And that's when it's become a habit, okay? So don't neglect that process. Like even the tiniest thing would make a big difference. Like for example, you know, isolating these specific prompts given, right? So as like, for example, identifying the input. So it's in there in the problem statement, could be like, you know, like hidden in somewhere in this big paragraph, but it's good to isolate that. And the output is basically this, and then it's, you can read it and it say, return a new list of numbers with duplicates removed. So. So let's copy the whole thing down, okay? All right, so I'm simply making our own life easy. That's all, okay? All right, so, so we got that clear, okay? So now basically we can take this example, okay? So list equals this. So this is the in example given, okay? Well, it should be there, all right? So, and I get over here, and basically, the 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 task is clear. Okay, remove extra twos, extra ones, and extra three. So basically, right? So return this. Okay, so we can simply write something like you know these are like shorthand stuff. Okay, now instead of this big paragraph. Okay. And we have a few narrowed down things. So given this, remove all the duplicate and this. So it's, it's really clear understand process, okay? So to do this, okay, without using set operations. So basically we'll have to basically go check each value and check whether it's a duplicate, okay? And if there's a duplicate, then basically Right, we need to keep only one value and then neglect the rest. Okay, so that's sort of what we have to do. And it says a new list. Okay, so it's a new list. We are not supposed to change this list. We are not supposed to delete duplicate items. We keep this one and then we basically create a new list. Okay. All right. So what do we have to do then basically? Okay. We are, we are supposed to create a new list. So that means when we find an item for the first time 
in the, the current list, we take that into our new list. Okay. When we find that item, same item for the next subsequent iterations, we simply have to neglect. That's all what we have to do. Okay. So a few things we supposed to create new list. So that means we need to initialize a new list empty one first and start adding items. And as we add, what do we have to do? So we need to check for the membership, right? Because we need to check. Okay, so we, I am encountering one again right here, but it's already there in here. So I need to basically do nothing at that point, okay? All right, so match is basically any list iteration method, okay? I'm pretty uh, general over here, but um, it's it's better if you can be specific, if you can, if you can write a specific example, okay? So plan, so you need to collect data, it's basically a list, okay? any list, okay? And we need to initialize the new list, okay? So init, let's say, like no duplicates or something like that, okay? All right, to an empty list. Right, so that's our second step. Third step, now we need to iterate, check each value of this list. So four, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, four elements or oh, items, okay. You can also take numbers as well. It's a list of numbers in take items in a list. Okay. But in my algorithm also, I tend to write it like this really close to Python code. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Because Python is really close to English programming language. Okay. So now I'm inside. So this should be. Uh, 3.1, okay, it's inside for loop 3.1, okay. So, so what do I have to do now? I need to basically take this item and check whether it's in there, okay, in here, okay, in basically in here, okay. So it's a membership check, simple membership check. If it is in there, I do nothing. If it is not in there, I basically add it to the list, okay? So, so what do I have to do? If, okay, items in, in here, okay? Well, we put not in, right? So need to add if it is not in, okay? All right. So not in, okay. Now we are inside our if statement. Okay, so 3.1, it just make it clear. And you may have a different way of doing that, that's fine, okay. One, and then we basically add, if it is not in there, that means not in there, so we need to add that now. So this one dot, so what do we use? Can use append, okay, append that value to that list. So items, yeah, append that items. So, uh, well, it's a, it's a plan algorithm. So append, but go for this word, this say, okay, I have to use this method append. So use that word, append items to this, okay. 
<coughs> Excuse me. All right. So now, well, basically, if it is so, if if we do this, and then it should be taking care of thing because we are only doing this operation if it is not in there. Okay. So if it is in there, you do nothing. So we are done basically. So in step four, we return. No duplicates. So turn this list. Okay. All right. So let's convert this to our implementation. Okay. All right. So collect the data. So that means pass formal parameter. Okay. And initialize. So this guy. equals to an empty list that's the initialization so for so you can simply copy all these things so what, that's what i do okay then and basically change in place okay so all right so <clears throat> excuse me So not in, no duplicates, okay? So basically, okay, dot append, oops, okay, append items, okay, that's it. And then return, no duplicate. All right, so well, okay, this will be one tab there. Okay, all right, so there you go. So let's run this. Do I already have the code over here? Okay, so this is the list. Remove this. All right, so we are running it. <coughs> so let's run. All right, so there was a mistake. All right, missing one required. I'm, I'm being past the list, so it's, it was the mistake. Okay, run it again. So I got one, two, three. Okay, so I removed it. So let's do this. So if we analyze this problem, okay, and then sometimes interviewers don't specifically asked to use this comprehension, but if it is relevant, always go for the comprehension, okay? So in this one, this is also possible because we get a sequence and we create another sequence, which is basically, we, we have to create another list. When that is the case, more often than not, a comprehension is possible. List comprehension is possible. Okay. You have a sequence, could be a list or a string or a tuple or this dictionary, okay, container or a sequence. And you have that, and you are being asked to create a list of something depending on the criteria. Okay. So go for a comprehension if it is possible. More often than not, it is possible. Okay. One thing because these comprehensions are optimized, okay? And the other thing is, it's really concise, just one line of code and that's it, okay? So interviewers usually don't ask specifically, but see whether, you know, the, the candidate has this depth of knowledge, okay? So if it's possible, go for it. And you can basically show off your colors. Okay, I know this comprehensions. All right, so let's try to convert this code. So I have the for loop things, right? Let's try to convert this code to a comprehension, okay? So, so I'm gonna get the same. Okay, two lines and I can start off with return, right? So just one line, it's a list comprehension. So can put two square brackets. So 
So I usually write the for loop part and it's already over here. So that's why it's really important that you write the algorithm that way, okay? So the same algorithm applies to comprehension too, okay? So you can simply write this, okay? All right, so now the tricky part, okay? So we need to filter out the duplicates. Now, this, especially this comprehension, a little bit tricky, okay? Because now we, we, uh, we have to return this list, okay? So, but we basically need to check against the same list. So that is something that we can do in a comprehension, okay? So what we can do over here is that we can create the list that we want to return, okay? Okay, so basically to an empty list, okay? All right, so we are not returning that. So we are not returning this comprehension, but I'm returning this one, okay? So basically, okay, I just keep it here, okay? Like this, okay? So now I can put my if statement, okay? This is my filter basically, okay? If items not in, these items not in duplicates, now I need to basically create my expression in which that I made this, well, like I'd say a dummy list or something like that, because I'm not returning that, okay? So basically this is what I have to do, okay? That's my expression. Functions calls up expressions, right? So, so let's now, make it like a, a new list. So, uh, so let's create a list or oh, let's say list two equals this. Okay. All right. So I need to remove this. All right, there you go. All right. So no, there's no error it seems. Okay. Now, basically, so here's the strategy guys. Okay. So, if I am to return this list, okay, and you can see that that would be this, and then basically I need to make reference to itself in my comprehension, which is not possible, right? So, so what I have to do is basically create this variable and then execute that operation that I needed to do in my list comprehension as the expression, okay? So that's all, so this is what I do, right? My function, so I take it over here. So this is the condition, okay? So if items not in duplicate, take that and append it, okay? All right, so let's check this one out. So this is the, say, second, and let me rename this to one, so go over here. <clears throat> excuse me, one, and the next one, oops. Okay, so two, okay. So let's run it. I got the same result, oops. All right, so now, so let me try to print this over here. Okay, so this is really interesting example. Okay, so if I print this L2, okay, so if, if let's say I return this L2, okay, return this to see what it is actually. All right, so let's run it again, and it's a list of nouns, and it, it's it's pretty much clear, right? So because append returns, doesn't return anything. So it, it returns none. 
So see my expression, it returns none. It does the thing that the ha it has to do, but it returns none. So my list will be three nuns. So that's the common mistake that we return that. That's why I cannot, I couldn't do it in a single uh, comprehension because I'll get this three nuns, right? So I had to create a separate variable outside and simply, you know, sort of use the comprehension to for my, for my purpose. That's all, okay. So I'm gonna change this back. Right, so it's, it's rerun. Okay, got the same result. All right, all right, guys. So, so that's our list lesson.